You ready? I'm looking. I'm ready. You get? You get? You ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm looking directly at you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Bad Input Podcast, everyone. I am your host, Nigel. This is my co-host, Ryan. Ryan, who uh, is wearing the same uh, hoodie as he has been wearing for the past three weeks, the JPEG Mafia hoodie. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good, man. I'm busy. School is kicking my ass. It continues just, to kick your ass, it, yeah, it I seems like. Yeah, two more weeks, and then uh, I'm done. And I got a lot of papers to write. That's you know, I had the man. entire semester to write them. But you know, you know, fuck school. I hate school. But it's all good. We we almost there. That feeling of being two to three weeks away is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like you you are done, but you have so much left to do still. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Bro, my teacher dropped the hugest assignment of the semester, like Thursday, and it's due on the seventeenth. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> why? I hate that shit. They they always do it at the worst fucking times too. Mm -hmm. Um. So what have you been playing? Oh, we're getting straight into the news. I would have, I would have asked, uh, would you? Do you prefer pizzas or calzones? But I, I feel like, I feel like that's too deep of a debate. I don't. Maybe, maybe I've had a calzone once. You've never had a cal. Maybe once. It may not be a California thing. No, we we have calzones and we have places. Yeah, we have cal calzones. Y'all got calzones over there? Yeah, we got calzones. I know y'all don't have like tamales. We don't. No. Ah, don't even talk <laughs> well, to me. Besides from like random food trucks, I, I don't think so. I haven't really seen it. Well, we may. We definitely may, actually. Mm -hmm. we It's a really good mix of uh, food cultures and shit here. But yeah, anyway, what are you playing? <laughs> uh, we still playing on Enter the Gungeon, baby. You know, always. How's your on progress on that? Uh, so, last week I, I misspoke. Uh, you have to. Find the Easter egg item, which is uh, called the Paradox, and then you have to defeat the final boss. And then once you defeat the final boss with the Paradox Easter egg, you then unlock a character called the Paradox. Now, the Paradox... Oh, you can play as them? Yeah, you play okay. as the Paradox. The Paradox is all five of... Well, you can be the computer, too. Yeah, so all five of the uh, playable characters, there's actually seven, no, eight playable characters, but you, 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 you can play as the four original and then the computer, at least for me, and then you have to re-beat the final boss, and then once you <laughs> beat the final boss, well, damn. you, you, uh, instantly like are teleported back to the first level as a new character which is yeah. the gunslinger and then you have to rebeat all of the levels and have to beat the final boss again to unlock the gunslinger that's a lot that's a and lot then, to do and, and then, then okay you unlock the gunslinger um so yeah i've been getting like like him so close as the paradox i've gotten to him several times it's just once you get to gun hell, bro. There's no like real drops for health, and like I'll have like, let me see. Each heart is two. I'll get an average of eight, so sixteen hearts. And bro, by the time I get to the boss, I have like two left. It's it's it's. It sounds crazy. It's hard as fuck, but I, I'm enjoying it still. I haven't given up. I don't think I'm going to give up. Um, into the gungeon roguelikes have so many there's so many of them and they have so many weird rules around yeah. them and weird like ways like you have to mix it up to keep it interesting especially mm -hmm. in a game where you're doing the same thing m many times in a row yeah. going on the same run except different rooms but i it's crazy that you have to do all of that shit just to <laughs> just to unlock the is the gunslinger like a special character does he do anything different uh Honestly, I haven't even looked into him. I'm just ready just look to cool? unlock him. Yeah, he cool. Look him up. He uh, he he looked cooler than everybody. And the cool, I mean, the, not the cool thing is, but like when you defeat a person's past. Oh, you probably have to defeat his past too. You have to defeat his past too. You have which to is defeat a different thing. You have to defeat their individual pasts or just him. 
or nah, the characters so, you unlock. So the he original cool. the original story is to defeat the four original characters past. But I guess with new updates or maybe it's always in there. I have to read into it. But like, dude, I don't it's 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 a lot. It sounds like it, yeah. Uh yeah. It's so fun though. And then that's not even a discount. Like there's challenge modes that you unlock that I have not done. Like there's modes where like each room there's a there's a hazards. So like uh like every everywhere you walk you leave a, a slime of tox uh, a toxic waste behind you. And if you stay in that waste too long, you take damage. And and then like uh all of the the enemies in the room might be jammed which is damned and they do like twice damage and they're all red oh it's, that's fucked that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fucked crazy. yeah that's yeah. crazy uh yeah uh but other than that yeah i'm enjoying that um i got the game pass y'all that's great i know it's I that's incredible only playing gungeon now you're gonna have so many other games to play besides yeah. into the gungeon it's gonna I, be good I, I got it for that one dollar deal. How know. are you even gonna play a game that isn't Enter the Gungeon? You gonna go into it, try to like move around, move around, try to shoot? You're gonna get fucked up. I'm so hardwired on Gungeon. <laughs> uh, Where's my next gun? Face said. I downloaded anyway. several games, but only have played one uh, since getting the the Xbox Game Pass, and it's because my friends wanted to play it. Uh, we playing Zombie Army. Uh, for Dead War, the spin I've seen that. Series. I've for, seen that a ton, uh, but I haven't played it. The Sniper Elite series. Same people who, who did the Sniper Elite series. It, the story. They. I is, didn't know that. Same studio. Yeah, same studio and everything. Okay. I mean, there's a story, but do you really care about the story? No. Not really. But, for most yeah. zombie games, it's it's generally yeah, the same thing. It's you're just trying to figure out how to stop it. <laughs> in, this, in this one, at least, the zombies aren't, like, a, a, a contagion, from what I understand. It's literally just Hitler being doing Hitler shit and trying to... Well, okay. He, he officially connects hell to, to Earth in this one. Well, I oh, guess they're okay. always... But, like, you see, like, hell portals, and you go around each city. Like, in France, you have to defeat a hell portal by blowing up a tower of shit. It's like a mix of Wolfenstein and Doom or something. Not on the action scale, but definitely the same okay. Nazi premise of Nazi doing Nazi shit. Yeah, it's it. The story wise, it sounds like a mixture of Doom and Wolfenstein. It's yeah, yeah. I would have to play the original ones to get. I don't even know if they're any connect. I'm sure they're connected, but yeah. At least with this one, you're constantly talking to like this doctor that knows shit and trying to stop it but i haven't beat it yet me and my friends have been playing it off and on and i'm on like level four or something we were getting our ass kicked. we did this challenge mode trying to unlock like this diamond skin that was only available that wednesday and then <laughs> the following day the challenge mode changed and we ended up doing it after like four fucking tries it was it was kind of difficult because there's this fucking cracked ass fucking uh npc that like takes so much damage dog it's insane it's kind of <laughs> like it's worse than a tank from left for dead like worse. oh oh yeah, okay yeah. that you damn i hate i hate i hate when i have to put like whole clips into an enemy mm -hmm. like not multiple worse. whole clips it's, yeah it's, it's not even multiple whole clips like you go run out of all your ammo then restock and then like <laughs> maybe not have to restock but like that's me and my, it's, fucking it's kinda, ridiculous yes yeah, it's ridiculous as fuck that's and then, ridiculous it depends on how many people are good because yeah like my we were on the there was 13 rounds we were on the 12th 11th round all three of my my um, teammates died and i was the only one and i killed all of them even the hard bitch by myself and I literally have one other, like, mini boss to defeat. And, bro, he just shotgunned me. And then, <laughs> like, you can start shooting them as you're down. But the thing is, they just start walking away out of your vision. Yeah. So you can't shoot them anymore. So you, <laughs> <laughs> they're just, like, around the corner and you can't kill them. It's, it's fucking bullshit. But 
that game is cool. Uh, That's crazy. I it'll, it'll be team games like that. Like that till, uh, like the new Left 4 Dead game comes out, which is the new Left 4 Dead. Is yeah, it's it, you. You'll have to be waiting for a, a, quite a while longer. Yeah. Team games like that are always so uh, frustrating because you have to get the right group of people. You have mm-hmm. to all be about the same skill level because if one is lacking behind, you're going to call out the, the one of them is obviously going to lack behind if they start lacking. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. But the other games I downloaded, so we will be playing, well, I will be playing these as soon as I graduate. And I downloaded Dead Cells. I know that one's pretty great. Uh, Dead Cells Mango. is great. Uh, Katana Zero, uh, Scorchbringer, which may or may may not be good, and that's about it. Other than that, um, I know I got a couple games on there. Oh, and Sniper Elite Four, I downloaded that, and Mass Effect One. Uh, oh, yeah, and Mass Effect One. All three of them are on the Game Pass. That's um, good. That's really good. Have you played Mass Effect before? I played Mass Effect one back in maybe when did it come out when did mass effect come out 2008 i think 2008 so I 2009 played it about 2007 maybe a year after it came out on pc at my dad's job because uh my dad's friend matt uh had his his work pc there but it could also run mass effect so this was the <laughs> first game I ever played on PC uh, was Mass Effect. And I played it for like an hour or, or, or something. That's crazy. And That's it was crazy. Real cool. It was real cool. I really enjoyed it, but I, I just never kept playing it. Probably because I forgot yeah. that the game existed immediately after yeah. I left. Not not a bad thing. It's just like I'm a fucking kid, you know. You you play something at someone else's house and completely forget the name mm-hmm. or what. Like You don't even know what to even search for, yeah. really. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't used to the fucking like playing on PC so my hand was all cramped up and shit. Oh, I wasn't yeah. used to Wasta. <laughs> I was like, this is pretty cool, this game is crazy. But I, I got to the uh what's the fuck that place where it's like the home hub world? I could Um the, the Citadel? Not yeah. the Cit- Oh, the Citadel? Okay. Yeah, the Citadel and I, I like walked around and explored the city and then uh after that, uh I don't think I got much farther than that. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm excited to play the Mass Effect game. Their Legendary Edition is coming out this month, actually, at the end of this month. But uh-huh. uh, luckily, they're all on Game Pass, so you can just you can play all of them right there yeah. at three twenty at four twenty p. Yeah, at four twenty p. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, you have to deal with uh, Mass Effect One's controls and shit. But uh, oh, are they bad? Mass Effect One is an amazing game, but the controls do not hold up. The way it controls does not hold up that great. Um, it, it just, it doesn't, you'll, you'll get used to it as you play. I remember playing all three of them in a row, like in like, uh, 2014, Mm -hmm. I played all three of them in a row and I didn't have too much of a problem, but it's noticeable when you jump from like one to two because the, uh, yeah, like the movement, the way the guns shoot, shit like that. I forgot Doom Eternal was on Game Pass. I'm going to have to download that too. That's an amazing game. I don't That's like an amazing one. game. We've talked about this not on a podcast, but like months ago. I don't. I don't like Doom One very much. It's oh, it, I didn't like it that much either. I thought it was just. I beat it, but I thought it was just okay compared to Eternal. Okay. But speaking of Eternal, yeah, you wanna get what into, have you been playing? You want to get into Returnal? Yeah. Doom Returnal. It's um, all on your Instagram, buddy. It, I love that game. That game is great. Uh, <laughs> so Returnal just came out. Uh, April 30th. I've been playing it basically almost nonstop. W- switching to Days Gone and shit <laughs> like uh, very like once or twice at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But Returnal, I've been playing just about nonstop. That game is amazing. Um, it's a roguelike. It's a roguelike, oh, it yeah, similar to Enter the Gungeon, so I'm glad we started with that. Hey. It's roguelike similar to en- Enter the Gungeon where you are on... It's about this character, Celine, who's an astronaut or something like that, mm-hmm. crashes onto a planet and has to make her way uh, to find, initially your objective is to find uh, the White Shadow radio station or something like that to uh, try to figure out what's going on. And But getting there is a task. Um, Returnal is 
now being regarded as an incredibly hard game. Mm -hmm. Incredibly hard. Uh, not, which isn't a false statement about it at all, even though I feel like I've gotten very far in the time I've had with it. Like, it hasn't been too much of an issue for me. Um, Returnal is very hard, though. So you're going through these sci-fi, very sci-fi, very reminiscent of uh, movies you may have seen. Very alien, um, I'm alien at, very much alien. I'm looking off to the side right now. I'm looking at gameplay as Nigel talks, but it's really good. Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely giving me Alien One vibes, which is a great yeah. movie. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, Alien One. Yeah, yes, dude, that game, that movie. I, I hadn't incredible. seen that movie till like a year ago. I bought all okay. of the movies in like a package yeah. deal. Bro, that movie is fucking fantastic. It's insane. It, it holds up fantastically. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that's shitty about it is the alien that pops out of homie's stomach. <laughs> it's, it's laughable, but... It yeah, that, that scene is really funny to yeah, me still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can spend uh, maybe three to four hours on a run. And... Uh, oh, wait. You said it's, there's runs. Yeah, multiple oh. runs. There's... Uh, you go through these, you can go through these multiple times. Obviously, it's a roguelike, but it takes so much time to clear a floor. Mm -hmm. I love it because it feels like when you're, uh, when you're not dying a lot, it feels like you're exploring a lot, and it feels like you're, like, it feels like you're playing, like, a regular single-player game. But, yeah, they... What's that uh, fucking movie that, with Tom Cruise... I'm getting mad well, there's tons of movies. Uh, Live, Die, Repeat, but there's a different yeah. movie. It, it's uh, literally, that's what I had in my head. That's the yeah. catchphrase. Uh, 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 fuck. I forget yeah, what it's we, called, but yeah, uh, it's it had me, it reminded me very much of that movie, actually, yeah. But um, you're exploring these floors, you're shooting a lot of very crazy-looking alien enemies with a lot of tentacles. Up. Yeah, yeah, that's the movie. Yeah. Um, but you're fighting a lot of very crazy looking enemies with, uh, a lot of tentacles uh -huh. and, um, the low, the environments of this are gorgeous also, by the way, um, yeah, huge, yeah. very different from each other. When I got from the first area to the second area, the first area is very claustrophobic, very, uh, very packed in, very tight spaces. The second area is very open, incredibly open. Actually, it feel, it felt like I was playing like a, a different game, um, but, yeah, you're going on these runs through these giant worlds. It's incredibly hard. The shooting is amazing. Um, I'm realizing that uh, a lot of people, when I see a lot of people uh, talk about this game, they're talking about how hard it is and how difficult it is. But I feel like it's a game that's asking you to be moving around a lot. And a game that is asking you, it's a bullet hell also. It's a very bullet hellish. Um, in the hell part, man, it, there's a lot of control vibes too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that too. Because just like control, you have to be moving around or you're just smacked. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very similar. It's pretty similar to control actually. Okay. Um, the movement, the air dashing, the moving around, stuff like that. Uh -huh. It's in, it's a ton of fun. I didn't die that much, but it's so much goddamn fun. Um, it's asking you to move around a lot and, um, when you're really moving around, when you really have a good pace of how the fight is going, it feels really good to clear out a room. Um, I had I saved a clip like uh, yesterday where I entered a room and cleared it in like thirty seconds, and it was uh, that's like the peak of what Returnal wants you to feel. Um, mm. Moving very fast, moving eliminating enemies very fast, clearing a room, and then stopping to explore the uh, area that you're in. Um, when you clear a floor, it feels very Metroidvania in that you can walk, you can go back and everything that you left there is still there. So if you if you left a gun in like the second room you went in and you decided to, you wanted to save it for later, or like this would be a better example with a health pickup. If you left a health pickup in a room and you get like an hour in and want to come back and get that health pickup, you can come back and get it. It'll still be there, which is really good. But um, yeah. The uh, gunplay is really good. The gameplay is very fast. Locations are very beautiful, very big. Um, the only issue I really have with it is the fact that you can't save uh, at any point during the runs. So, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah. So you can go on these four to five hour runs. Um, there are three bosses. 
Um, there, well, there's six bosses, but there's three, there's like an act one and two. There's six levels in total. Um, they're split in half. You can get to the third boss, beat it, and get to the second act. But, um, three bosses per run, um, you can die at any point during these runs. And it is very easy to die because the enemies are aggressive and they hit very hard. Um, and also there's so much goddamn shit on the screen. But you can get hit by one of these bosses and lose four to five hours of progress and have to start over. And it's hard to get that will to keep going back up when you know that if you start a run, you'll have to finish it because you can't save. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like every other, yeah, every other enter the like enter the gungeon and shit. Every other roguelike game, you can save, you, and I just I don't understand. You the level in Enter the Gungeon, you can save and then come back at any time. But yeah. I will say, Enter the Gungeon fucked me over one time. I saved a run and then I came back and I had like half of the actual pickups I had <laughs> they fucked you over with I that was what? like ah, oh, bro I'm just restarting at this fuck you thing. might as well yeah that's it fucked up fuck. but yeah I don't I think I, I mean even an hour run that's when I'm going for that final boss I end up at like hour and a half on time yeah that, that's tough so I know four or five hours is Ridiculous. It feels like a campaign when you're making a lot of good progress. It feels like uh-huh. a full campaign. So when you die near the end of a run and have to start all the way over, it hurts a lot more than it hurts a lot more than you feel like it would in a normal roguelike. Because mm-hmm. other games you hit, you save, and even though you get permanent upgrades and shit in this, you the fact that you can't save or anything when you get deep in is is crazy to me. Um, but besides that, I don't have any other complaints. I love this game. This might be my, um, game of the year so far. Because right now, it's, for one, it's the only thing that's come out in a very long time. Is it and a PS4 exclusive? PS5 exclusive. Damn. Oh, cool. yeah. I didn't even talk about the, uh, DualSense. The DualSense on this game uses it the most, uh, of any game that's out on the PS5 besides Astro's Playroom, which came... Uh, pre-bundled with the PlayStation. Um, do you know? Do you know about the Dual Sense? Are you a member of the Dual Fe- Dual Sense uh, cult religion? It's it's basically just how the controller works, right? Just like the vibrations and shit that. Yeah, let me let me convert you, brother. Um, <laughs> let me convert you over to uh, the the Dual Sense side. Where? Um, Dual Sense is the best controller I've ever played a game with because it. Not only does it feel good to hold, but it also adds so much more to the experience than um, a normal controller would. Because it, uh, when you in Returnal specifically, when you um, when you have a gun, you can you can aim down sights by holding the trigger halfway down, mm-hmm. and to know you're holding it halfway down, the trigger is stopped. It's completely stopped, and you can't push it down unless you want to use your alt fire. And if you do push it down, it just uses your alt fire. And um, the haptic triggers are insane. Um, you can feel the you can feel the the recoil from the guns as you're shooting, and it feels different throughout. It fe- every gun feels different. Every gun shoots different, and every gun feels different when you shoot it. They also make different sounds. There's a speaker in the controller. I I got caught on my words. Uh, there's a speaker in the controller. Um, <laughs> That you, you can hear. Up by the dual sense. <laughs> <laughs> I get choked up by the dual sense. It's such an emotional experience. Um, the controller, when you okay, this is the coolest shit ever. When you hold the uh, alt fire, when you hold the left trigger down while your alt fire is charging, it'll slowly charge up. The, the controller will slowly have like a building up sound as if it's uh, charging up, and the controller lifts its pressure as it's cooling down. So you'll be able to press it when it uh when it's full again, um, shit like, like that. The, like the like the button will be locked out until. Not well, it'll be it'll kind of be locked. You, like you can feel that it's like that it won't move by mm-hmm. normal means unless you like force it down. Gotcha. But it like uh, while fighting, I was holding the controller and shooting and checking if my alt fire was ready by pressing down on it. And it, if it stopped me, then I knew it wasn't. Then it, I knew it wasn't ready, yeah. and shit like that. Um, but she got a fucking lightsaber. This crazy. <laughs> the this controller is insane. Um, it plays sound very regularly. You can feel the rain in the uh, 
in the beginning area, there's you're like starting out the first crash site. There's a bunch of rain. Yeah. Um, it's raining the, where you are. The... Yeah, you can feel the rain on the controller as you're holding it. You can like there's like little pitter patters of the speaker, and you can feel it. It's it's insane. You, um, do you have any like real life friends with a PS5? Because you need to go to their house. Because that that shit is crazy. Nah, man. Not well. Uh, do you consider work people friends? Usually go, not. Go to their house. Nah. You pretend not. to be friends just to go to his house. <laughs> yeah, for, the X, for the PlayStation Five controller. Yeah. And that's what for the. Vanessa for the dual sense? Be, be a fake human being just yeah. to hold this controller. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> um, so yeah, Returnal is so far the best game to come out this year. Um, nice. It's incredible. The music, well, the, I don't, have I noticed the music at all? Is it, it's a, it seems like a game that doesn't really have a... There's there's uh there's music but it's a it's like it's very like ambient. It's one of those games where you can throw in a podcast or something and you wouldn't really miss a lot of the experience because most of it is just gameplay. Um they're fighting the Frike right now. Oh yeah, I beat that dude. Some uh people are having a lot of issues with uh how difficult the game is. Like day 1 I was seeing people saying that they they've spent an entire week on the second area and i beat it in um i beat it in like two tries so i don't people I, that's always the funniest thing to me when people have a, a difficult time with an area that i didn't have a difficult time with yeah like i i can understand it it seems to me like people uh people are going into it uh thinking of it as a regular third person shooter when it's specifically a bullet hell it's uh in with that knowledge you should play the game differently like no one's ever shooting directly at you but you can um you can every time there's shooting you can see you can see that they're not shooting directly at you and you can see the gaps that there are in the fire so uh, you just maneuver around it a lot of people i feel like are uh probably going into it thinking it's just a third person shooter because it looks like a cool third person shooter but there's a lot more to it than that there's uh, a lot of upgrades, a lot of uh, the gameplay, the movement and shit like that. It's really good. The gunplay is excellent. But yeah, I think that's was that all I had to say about Returnal. I feel like I feel like that's it. Well, um, there are scenes of um, when you beat a boss and come back to the first world. When you beat a boss and die. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. you come back to the first world and you have access to a there's a house that appears in um, in runs that can be the lights can be on in the house or they can be off. If they're on, you can enter the house. If they're off, you can't. Um, and when you go in the house, there are story bits. The story bits are pretty good. Uh, I, I'm very interested in the lore that's going on. I have no I'm not really sure what's going on. Yeah. But it seems really cool. It has something to do with astronauts and children or something. I'm not really... Like, there was a scene where... Um, there was a scene that actually scared the shit out of me. Um, I went into the house, and um, I went into the house... It, it puts you in a first-person view when you go into the house, also. So I went into the house, and the house looks like the house from P.T. Or Resident Evil oh, okay. or something. Yeah. So <laughs> it... Um, at some point, I was in the living room, and I was looking at the TV, and the TV was playing, like, a recording of Inside the House, and there was an astronaut down the hallway, uh, down the hallway that was right outside the door next to me. So when I walked out of the room, the astronaut was standing there, and he was just standing there. So I didn't really know what he wanted, and I'm not really sure what the story is. He could totally be a, a non-violent, like, pacifist kind of person. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. But that legitimately, I was like, why, why are you here? And there was nothing, nowhere else for me to go. You can't exit the house when you are already in it unless you've vi- finished it. It'll teleport you out when you finish it. But um, he was outside the hallway, and I walked out into the hallway and turned left, and he was dead ass standing there. So I went back in the room for a minute, <laughs> and, I, and I had to build up the strength to go to walk towards him, and he disappeared. Nice. So I'm curious about what that's about. Oh, at some point later, um, at a, another story thing, um, I it started me out knocking on the door to get in, 
and then the perspective is completely switched to a, a child playing the PlayStation Five um, and watching me at the door, so, and, and that and that was really weird. So I don't really know. I'm not really sure what the story is, but I'm interested because it's very weird. Um, and be, it seems it seems pretty interesting. I like it so far though. Um, gameplay is great. Uh, environments are great. Um, gunplay is great. Um, add a save system, some sort of save system. Um, auto saving, preferable, but if not that, can you at least have a save in safe rooms, in like at the end of a run when the floor is clear? At some point, I want to be able to save because I don't want to. When you're in a run, you're just you're just in the run. You, you're either gonna die or you're gonna beat the game. Yeah. You can't save, and you can't do anything else besides this. You can put it in rest mode, but if the game updates in rest mode and closes, that's you just lose all that progress. Are you, are you sure? Are you sure there's not a save mode, and you're just done? One hundred percent sure. I've seen okay. people talk about it on um on like Twitter and shit that you can't okay. save in in reviews. You can't save for some reason. I I don't understand. Like you keep you keep there are permanent upgrades that you keep. And yeah. shit like that. So I saw the character get a melee skill upgrade. Yeah, you get like a sword. You get a sword too. The sword is mm-hmm. is crazy. Oh, I see the house you're talking about. The light. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You get you get permanent shit. So if you're saving any progress, wouldn't it make sense to save at some point in the run as well? Yeah. Like that's is just crazy to me. Um, but besides that, the game is fantastic. If you have adversity towards um difficult games you will not enjoy this game um i've seen people really not enjoying this game because they're dying a lot and it's very hard but i am enjoying it if you're fine with hard games specifically bullet hell games then you will enjoy it because it's fantastic that complaint with hard games is not new i remember you sent me that screenshot of the guy who was like uh he went to GameStop to buy Sekiro. Oh, Sekiro. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Return that shit immediately because it was too yeah. hard. That was <laughs> funny as hell. I remember that, too. Yeah, that shit. Yeah. People, I, I understand it, but, like, people really, when you get in, when you want to play something and you're expecting it to not be nearly as fucking hard as it is, it, nothing can be as big of a turnoff as dying immediately as soon as you as soon as you encounter enemies shit like that i understand why people are like i don't want to play this shit but uh (laughs) besides that this game is it's a great game um haven't beat it yet i am on i am in the second act uh have done a couple runs into the second act haven't beaten it yet but uh by next week i probably will have you're making you, some pretty good you progress. Feel like this game has the potential to keep your interest even after you defeat it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. The gun, the gameplay is legitimately just that good. Okay, is legitimately just incredibly fun. Very fast, and I feel like, you know, when you get in that groove where you feel like you're playing the game how it wants you to play it. Yeah, that's how I feel playing Returnal all the time. Okay. Like, all the time I'm playing it, because I, it, it feels constantly rewarding, um, because you, you get a lot of shit, that, like permanent upgrades, and um, you just get a lot of shit during runs that makes you feel rewarded for how hard the game is, and clearing a room that is really hard, and shit yeah, like that. That's something that games don't... There's a fine line with it, uh, when games make you feel like you're actually progressing. Yeah. And it makes it fun. Like yeah. There's some games where progression is just un, unsatisfactory and it just leaves, like, no real reason for you to play it. At, at... I, I could see it being especially hard for, like, a roguelike game, too. Yeah. Because it's... When the, when the entire genre is losing your progress, it's hard to make it feel like you're still making progress after you die. Yeah. And I really appreciate when a game can do that. Like that this and Hades are the only ga- roguelikes I have been super into. 
Because uh, Enter the Gungeon is good, but I have I I've never I've done a bunch of runs of Enter the Gungeon, but I've never it never really stuck to me, so I don't feel like I'm ever gonna beat it. Uh -huh. But there's just something about like Returnal and Hades or something something about the way their systems do it that's like addicting to me, and I love it. Hey, sad news: Hades is not available on Xbox. It's not. Mm -mm -hmm. I thought it was at some point. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. it's only on PC and Switch. I have it on PC and Switch, so. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. It's on Mac, too. Oh, you should get it on Mac. You should get it. That game is great. Um, what else have I been playing? Oh, I started uh, Near Replicant. Have you ever played either of the Near games? No. I okay. was going to play uh, Automata at one point, but I just never bought it. Automata is really good. Um, I, people talk about that game like it's the it's the greatest game to ever exist mm -hmm. i can see why they think that because um the story is legitimately very good yeah um the combat is very good but something about it i i don't know i feel like i got used i'm very used to what if robots were human i'm very used to that idea so the that in automata didn't really do it all the way for me so you're telling me that detroit become human human wasn't your favorite game of all time? Nah, nah, it, nah, it, it didn't do it for me. <laughs> nah, Detroit to become human didn't do it for me. Um, it made me think of them as, of the people who made it as less human. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Near Replicant, um, I, it is a remake of the game that came out in, I think like 2012 or something. Um, the original Near, it, has been i've only played like two hours into it because i was streaming it mm -hmm. um Where? i was expecting i was streaming on uh twitch.tv slash for all nerds yes sir. Uh, where you can catch me weekly um i was streaming near replicant and i wasn't expecting it to immediately feel as good like i wasn't expecting the combat to feel as good as it did immediately like um apparently in the original game they didn't do the they didn't do the uh combat like they do in Automata where it's like hack and slashy um but they retroactively put it into this game and it has definitely improved because of it even though I haven't played the original I'm sure there's no way <laughs> that if it didn't have this combat system that it was good <laughs> because I've heard nothing but that combat system is terrible um, but it's been good so far. I'm not super far into it. I'm, um, where am I? I haven't started fishing yet. So, uh, there's, uh, fishing is apparently a big part of this game. Um, so is gardening, but I haven't gotten there yet either. Um, Word. but I've, I have fought a couple bosses and I have, I the bosses were crazy. The bosses were great. I fought, okay. um... There was, like, two suits of armor. It was, like, uh... I don't know. Wait, wait you said Replicant was trash? What, no. Were, no. People, no, no, no. What people said the original combat was. Oh, yeah. The original Nier's combat was trash. Yeah. That's interesting, especially since they put out Bayonetta in 2009. Oh, yeah. It's... Wait. Platinum? It's Platinum yeah. Games, right? Nier... Wait. Platinum made the original Nier, too? Uh... Because if that's the case, then I don't know what they were doing with that combat if it was if it wasn't like hack and slashy. I don't know why they would have not done that. Let me double check. Maybe not. Because they did a uh, automata, but at least for Wikipedia, there's no near replicant on here. So maybe it's a different company that made it. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, it must be cuz uh this one this new one is platinum cuz yeah, Bayonetta came out. I'm looking at the original Nier's game. This looks like no, shit. No, uh it was released by a developer called Cavia. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this I'm looking at the combat, the original combat. It looks uh slower and yeah, it doesn't look like... it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. But it doesn't look great. Oh, there's another near game before that. Well, there's Dragon Guard before that. 
Nah, I wasn't even talking about that one. I was talking about there's near replicant and then there's g gestalt. Oh, that is that is near. That is original okay. near. That they're just this. Wait. It's just a, near gestalt. For PlayStation, wait. In Japan, there was a release as oh, it was released as re, re, replicant for PlayStation Three. Oh, the okay. Younger main character. Gestalt is like is Gestalt the re the release in America? Oh no, yeah, yeah. Gestalt is the only uh, is the version of Nier that came to America. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. There's two games. I don't know why they would name it differently. It's weird when studios do that. That's so stupid. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, about the actual game that we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> the combat is very good. Um, not very far into it. Uh, the story is about... I, I don't know what the... I named, I named this character um, Butt Robot. Um, a little boy named Butt Robot and his sister. Um, who, his sister who is very sick and who needs uh, some kind of flower to get better or something. Some No, a flower to sell to get very rich, and then they'll be able to afford medicine or something like that. But currently, they are broke. <laughs> they are broke, and I think the game starts off with them in, like, an abandoned, uh, abandoned grocery store, and uh, outside you're fighting, and immediately they throw you into combat, which is good, because the combat is very good. Um, I haven't gotten super, super into the story yet, though, so I, I, next week I'll have more to say about it. Next week, uh, I'm gonna play it again this week, and I'll hopefully be more, will have seen more shit or something, but so far it's really good. I'm not having too many issues with it. I don't know what's going on. Um, Nier Automata is really cool. Don't know what's going on in the lore or story of Nier Automata, but, um, very cool game. Uh, nice. uh, robots look look very nice. Uh, the robots got fat asses. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, last game I've been playing, Days Gone. Uh, last yeah. week I completely skipped talking to you about Days Gone. Um, we were so impressed by the MK movie, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, we talked for two like two hours about the MK movie. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Days Gone is the uh, zombie game from Ben Studio that came out. 2018 2019 i'm gonna i'm just gonna guess i'm not even gonna look it up i don't care uh days going <laughs> open world zombie game surprisingly pretty good apparently it wasn't this way on launch because it launched with a bunch of bugs and shit but um the version that i'm playing right now is a very good version what? haven't had a lot of issues um it's essentially you play as this, this ugly character with his ugly friends and his ugly wife and his ugly. <laughs> I don't like any of the characters. Is the issue? Um, it's generic white guy. Yeah, you play as biker man Deacon Saint John and his uh, biker man friend Boozer, or that he calls Booze Man and sometimes Booze. Um, where he, he, at the beginning of the zombie epidemic, he put his wife, his ugly wife, on a, on a helicopter that crashed almost immediately, it seems mm -hmm. like. Um, and he then. Got it straight out of. Uh, what's that Will Smith movie where he puts uh, Willow Smith on the, uh, the helicopter? And Hancock? They all... Anyway. No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, Pursuit of Happiness? No, fuck. What's the Fresh the Prince fucking... of Bel Air? No, with the grenade in the end where he kills himself. Well, he didn't uh, have to. Uh, Suicide Squad. Uh, I am Legend. I am Le Oh, Willow Smith was in that movie. He's the main character. Willow Smith is in that movie. Willow Smith is in that movie. Yes. I don't remember Willow Smith being in that. She's uh, yeah. Baby Willow Smith. Oh, okay. That's probably why I didn't recognize her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, days going. Um. Yeah, his wife died immediately. Anyway, <laughs> uh, in the rest of the the whole game, he's really upset about it even though it happened, like, a couple years ago, he's still very angry about it. Um, yeah. And he expresses it in the way that he talks to people, the way that he expresses himself when, he, when he's by himself. He just sounds very angry. Um, when, he, when he talks to people, he's expressed that he doesn't really care about people uh, yeah. anymore because his wife, his wife dying probably broke him or something like that. But, 
the gameplay is good. You a lot of it is exploring um, this midwestern area. A lot of grass, a lot of mountains, a lot of trees. You're in like a foresty kind of area. It's a it's a game. You said what? It's not Miss West. You're in Oregon. Yeah, I believe so. Oh yeah, you are in Oregon. It's it's wherever nah, it's wherever I, they they got trees and mountains I don't even and know grass. How I remember that. I've never played that game in my life. Okay, well, yeah, it's wherever they have grass. Um, uh-huh. This is very much a game for um, for dudes who have that like uh, that like forest tattoo with trees on their uh, forearm. You've probably seen it. Um, nope. it's, <laughs> you haven't seen something like that? Nah. It's probably yeah. It's probably the area that you're in. Uh, because I've seen a lot of <laughs> dudes with uh, with tree tattoos on their forearms. What you trying to say? Um, I, I live in a neighborhood with no trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> well, if it's if it's not wrong. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this dude. Uh, there's not. It's a it's an open world zombie game. Um, you do a lot of traveling, you do a lot of, you have to take care of your bike, you have to upkeep your bike, you have to, um, Which keep is it... funny, because in, like, the first two missions, like, somebody just, like, takes your bike, right? Or, like, they, like... Do they? In the they, first... They take, they take it for parts or Oh, something. yeah, 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 they, they strip all your bike of, of shit, and yeah, then they give you a camp. shittier bike. Yeah, you go to a camp, and then you try to get it back. I don't know how I remember all this. I just watched one video on it, and I was like, "Yeah, this is boring." So I'm not going. I'm not. <laughs> um, but you have to upkeep your bike. You have to refuel it, keep it repaired, keep it like up to maintenance code or however he feels. Um, I I drove my bike out of a camp because I thought they would have refueled my my gas tank after a mission, and after <laughs> I drove. For like not even like half a mile outside of the camp, and had to walk my bike back to the camp <laughs> <laughs> through zombies because for some reason they didn't refuel my gas tank. That's hilarious. But um, it's it's uh the gunplay is actually very good. It feels very punchy. It feels like the way people react when you shoot them. For some reason, I don't. It, this is gonna sound like I'm a psychopath. Um, the, the way people react when you shoot them, uh, is very satisfying because I don't know what it is about the way they animate, but, um, I don't know. You click the button on their head and they just, damn, (laughs) (laughs) they fall very like dramatically and it, it makes it, I don't know. It makes it really satisfying to do. And the gunplay is very good. The gunplay feels very good. Um, Besides that, I haven't. Oh yeah, the uh, the fact that they have zombie hordes in there is crazy. Um, yeah, that was the biggest. That was the biggest thing game. about it. Yeah. Um, the zombie hordes. I haven't faced too many of them or seen too many of them, but every time I've seen them, they've been terrifying. Which I'm sure is the effect that they want to have. Mm-hmm. The and when you get in a crowd of these motherfuckers, they will tear you apart in seconds. You're dead in seconds. Um, but. Aside from that, uh, the basic structure of it is you do missions for people at their respective camps, and you can gain their camp trust and uh, do jobs for them. Uh, they give you upgrades and shit, depending on your their trust level with you. And uh, it's a pretty good, serviceable, open-world game that has zombies in it. Sounds like a zombies mercenary without the nuclear bombs that you can call in. I haven't re- re- I haven't seen any nuclear bombs, so Oh, I was about we'll to say see. you never played Mercenaries too. I was about to say what the <laughs> That but, game needs a remaster or a third one. Would that that would be crazy. That would be crazy if they brought that back now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be perfect. But yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty good I haven't even I don't even feel like I've interacted with the zombies that much because a lot of the missions are dealing with other people and talking to other people and like it's it feels very much like uh, this may change while the game, as the game continues, but it feels very much like uh, zombie zombie things have a habit of um, turning their zombie product into a product, or turning their zombie show into like a show where people are arguing and fighting with other people, but the zombies are in the background. 
currently it's felt a lot like that so far. It may change. I fought one super zombie, which was crazy. He it was just like this big ass buff dude that was eating another man. He was eating as another zombie. It was crazy. Doesn't that uh that game have zombie animals and shit, right? Yeah, that too. Um, they they are fucking annoying. I don't get anything, any enjoyment out of the the animals being zombies because they're they just annoying. Bear, because they're just fucking op. I haven't seen a zombie bear yet, but I think I'm going to run into that pretty soon. Uh, um, I've ran into zombie like wolves or hyenas or whatever. Okay. They're really goddamn annoying. Uh, I'll just be riding my bike and they'll come up and try to attack me. And if they attack you, you fall off your bike, and sometimes your bike will take a lot of damage from it. Uh -huh. And you'll have to sit there and repair your bike. You'll you'll have to kill these enemies, go and repair your bike. Hopefully no one comes and attacks you from behind while you're repairing your bike. But um yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty serviceable, good uh seven out of ten, eight out of ten seven out it of ten uh, <laughs> experience. IGN gave it a six and a half. Yeah, that is on release I, though. I, With I bugs not, it Yeah, I don't trust IGN. That's that's uh pre -re like yeah that's pre release though with the uh before patches I feel like I am playing a better version of the game I haven't had any issues luckily but we'll see um I haven't had any issues except for with the characters in the and the characters I don't care about in the story that's um just okay he's trying to find I have no idea what his end goal is yeah I don't, he's just kind of existing and I think that's why he's angry yeah um. <laughs> But aside from that, um, we can probably get into the news now if you want. You ready for some news? Let's get into the news! Uh, we have one news topic ready today. Only one? Um, yeah. I feel like we've talked a lot about the other games we were, we were playing. So, And right now, since not, not a lot of games are coming out, uh, there isn't a lot of news. So today we are going to be talking about the Toys for Bob... Um, yeah, I don't even know what this is. Let me see. Not... They aren't gone, but they are shifting their pers shifting their studio to be a support studio for. Okay, let me read this. Oh, they're Skylanders developer. Yeah, they were also the developers of Skylanders. Um, Toys for Bob, most recently known for rebooting the long abandoned Crash Bandicoot series, has now been shifted into a support studio for Call of Duty Warzone. This is similar to months ago when Vicarious Visions, who rebooted Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, was shifted into a Blizzard support studio. And I am basically, I'm basically bringing this up to discuss, um, I don't like this, and I don't like this trend, um, of successful, successful studios with smaller games being consolidated into part of a bigger studio making and focusing entirely on their bigger games and not having their own vision for things. And I feel like you would be able to speak to that because um, I'm sure in music especially, uh, there's a lot of talented people who decide not to use their talent or can't get far enough with their own talent and have to uh, help someone else develop their sound or something like that. Absolutely. I mean, it it feels thing, like that. The biggest thing is you can American music, <clears throat> American popular music rather, is very simple, right? And a lot of people don't like. I don't want to say new ideas, but. I guess new ideas. I guess, yeah, that would be it. Something that isn't just as common as every, no disrespect to DJ Khaled, every DJ Khaled song that, you know, I mean, like, and then you have to lower your standards. And one of my best friends, um, he's a way better producer than me, but he's like, he hates that he has to dumb his sound down to, you know, get placements or anything. And I, And my personal belief is like, uh, why not do both? Why not do those dumbed down versions of these songs, but also still make magnificent pieces of work, right? Yeah. But I mean, it shouldn't have to be that way. And I, I, I mean, that's that's the problem with like a mega corporation like Activision in the first place, who have a conglomerate on the gaming industry. They have a stranglehold, and it, it really sucks that because they put out 
I mean, Pro Skater 1, was that the terrible one? Pro Skater 1, no. <laughs> uh, it's the, it's the, one of the, it's the game that made the, uh, skateboarding the, games cool. No, 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 no. What was the terrible Pro Skater, or... T- p- There's uh, one that, uh... That the came one... out recently. That was pretty bad. Oh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that wasn't them, right? No, that was a different studio, yeah. Okay, we're, we're good, we're good. Yeah, no, they, the... didn't do, they didn't do Pro Skater 5, so that's marvelous. I have beat the Crash Bandicoot uh, Insane Trilogy. I bought it like a year before it came out. Yeah. I still have not beaten it, um, insanely enough. Um, I mean... There's something weird about the fact that um, I don't like that... They were it's putting a out pretty trash game for a minute, and then they they stopped making trash games. Yeah, when um, it's it's weird because when I guess they're when studios make games or reboot games like this, and they're a smaller studio, like sometimes they're working a lot of the time they're working with other people's like property, like yeah. other people's IPs. Like Crash Bandicoot Four wasn't made by them, but since they brought it back and it did well, I don't understand why why Activision wants to turn what they did uh, and their talent into something to support Call of Duty when... I don't understand that either. I don't you, get it. I you, hate... You, sh- you should allow these other studios to continue to make great games because they already have a cash cow with Call of Duty anyway. It's not like they need more Call of Duty. It's not like you need... Yeah, it's not like you need more Call of Duty and... You also don't need another studio working on Call of Duty when you have so many studios working on Call of Duty. Yeah. Every Activi- every studio that's under Activision is now working on Call of Duty. I have no idea why. They have they were doing fine just before they before they had all these studios focus on making Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. And specifically Toys for Bob is working on Warzone. So to use their talents that came from or that created and continued uh, the long abandoned Crash Bandicoot series to use their talents to convert it to Warzone. Why? Warzone is not even that fun. Yeah, I. It sucks seeing. And this happened. This was much more personal for me when it happened to uh, the Vicarious Vision Studio that worked on Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two, because they did amazing and the game did well. The the game sold well. So it seems like it just seems like uh, when bigger studios, bigger companies like this, it's I don't like it's it's a weird trend right now. Yeah. Um, when bigger studios have a smaller studio under them that have something that have something that does well, sells well, sells well and looks very good. They're like, oh, give that to me. Give that to me. <laughs> I, Work on what we have now. I'll tell you this. I was extremely, extremely scared uh, with uh, Sekiro, or Sekiro, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, because Activision was a part of the release of that game. So I thought it wasn't going to be very good. Um, just, just because Activision had their greedy little fucking palms on the game. Yeah, <laughs> as they do. But I think it was purely on a, uh, like, a release help thing, like, getting in more places. Yeah. But... Stuff yeah. like that is fine, but also, it, it seems to be an entryway to get closer <laughs> and to eventually maybe buy these studios and yeah. have them consolidated into the bigger Activision and become part of, like, a big team of just bodies working on Call of Duty ridiculous man when these teams who are clearly who are too, clearly filled with talented people could be working on something entirely new something they want to work on something cool that could actually that could actually uh be make cool. something crazy in yeah. video game in the gaming space because we don't call of duty has been around forever if they didn't do this call of duty would have continued yeah. if they did call of duty will continue no matter how hard we try for it not to Bro, and <laughs> Bob put out the Disney Extreme Skate Adventure game. That game was heat. Did you ever <laughs> play that game? No. What is that? What? I've never played it a, that. It was a skate game for, like, uh... It only had three skate... I mean, three properties from Disney. 
but it's Tarzan, uh, Toy Story, and Lion King, and you could, like, it's a skateboarding game, um, but, dog, like, you can be in Andy's room skateboarding, it was fire. That's that, crazy. That, that cool. Oh, I think I've seen a video about that, actually, specifically yeah. about that Toy Story part. Yeah. I think, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, I just, I put this topic on here mainly because I just hate that, uh, hate seeing that this is continuing to happen in the in the industry because I, I really don't understand seeing a smaller studio with so much talent in deciding to have them just be more bodies working on your your generic war war shooter thing. Yeah. Without like you would continue without them. Why turn them into something that they do not do, and that they were like call it Crash Bandicoot uh for is very beloved by people who love Crash Bandicoot. Mm -hmm. People, long-time fans of the series are really huge fans of that. I just don't understand uh, deciding to cut that off entirely for them to work on Warzone. Especially, like, that and uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater thing. I, I, I just don't get it. Because these studios could easily be making something more, like, Does it? a lot uh, more interesting and a lot, like, we're, the Call of Duty market is filled. We you don't need them to. Who's gonna make the next t Tony Hawk shit now? Who uh? Who who's gonna make the next Crash? They they own them now, but who originally owned Diablo? Blizzard. Yeah, don't they own Blizzard now too? Uh, yeah. I oh man, that's no <laughs> no <laughs> no. Yeah, Blizzard is wild. And I hate Diablo. man. I don't like that at all. Yeah, that's insane. I don't like that at all, man. It's ridiculous. It's don't like sign with Activision. That's a death sentence for your studio. It's like the it's like Disney. It's they're like the the Disney for gaming the gaming space. Don't Disney they work for Bungie too. God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck, man? Just let these studios do their own thing. I ah, uh, they they're being turned into. The Call of Duty camps. Okay, this, is this bullshit. one might be might be a stretch. Did they work on uh studio C D Project Red? Who helped develop that? Uh I think I think C D Project Red. C D Project Red uh self publishes. Nah man. They have WB for some things, I think. But they self publish for the most part. Develop and publish. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I put this topic on here mainly because I just hate it. Um, I just hate this this growing trend of... Uh, not growing trend because it's basically been going... Uh, it's basically been happening in the industry for years, for decades, really. Mm -hmm. But I just hate that... Um, I, don't, I don't understand the consolidation of studios I and the converting them to different things that they, are, one, aren't used to, and two isn't necessary when they can make other things. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that uh, they're getting these companies when they're out of their prime, but that's not true for Torch for Bob, as well as Vicarious. Yeah. Great product. They, they both uh, they both put out great games last year. Literally last year. It's crazy. I was about to say, they got, they got uh, Blizzard on a pretty low plateau, as well as Bungie. But okay. Nah, nah. Yeah. I I don't I don't like I don't like all these companies being the same thing. It just it leads to one company nah, I mean, controlling so much of the entire industry and I don't Yeah, it's becoming take too interactive. Yeah, it's not good. In Tencent mm -hmm. or something like that. It's not yeah, good. Yeah, Tencent too. It's it's not good. Um mm -hmm. But no. on to better, nah, better we're subjects. We're not about to leave it like that. We gotta, we gotta do a moment of silence for Torch okay. Bob. Okay, and yeah, Mike let's Harry's do a, a moment of silence for all those lost uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skaters and Crash Bandicoot. R.I.P. Crash. Rest in peace, Tony Hawk. Okay, Yusuke, huh? Y y Yasuke, actually. Yasuke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, we, how far are you into Yasuke? I have not watched a single thing. Okay. I have watched four episodes. I will not spoil you, uh, but I will do a quick mini-reviews, but I haven't, I haven't finished it, so there will okay. be no 
crazy spoilers, but it's a it's really good so far. The music, very good. The music, very good. Um, the a lot of things I wasn't expecting, which I can't tell you about because you wouldn't be expecting it either. But Yasuke is very cool. I like the way. I thought it would be more grounded. I thought it would be a more grounded in reality samurai thing. Mm-hmm. You'll see when you when you watch it, but it's not. Is it but, on a level of? Uh, oh my you God. probably you probably won't be able to guess what what the fuck it is in this anime. Because no, I, it uh, doesn't make sense to me. But it is cool, but it didn't make sense. Samurai, uh, Afro Samurai? Mm, I, Afro not Samurai in, has, like, in, has like has like cyborgs and shit too, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not on. It's not all the way on that level. It's not like, well, it. it I can't say it doesn't mix modern with with, with uh, the time period, but it definitely does in ways um yeah but yeah i don't want to spoil it for you it's very good the action scene's very good uh yasuke uh played by lakeith stanfield i'm watching the the jap the not the english version the english mm-hmm. dub obviously but um lakeith stanfield's doing a very good job as yasuke he seems very at first i was like oh he's just gonna be doing that uh, um, he does playing yeah. himself not playing himself, but doing that thing that uh, yeah. when a- actors become voice actors, they just kind of uh, don't have as much emotion in their voice as they do usually when performing. Mm-hmm. But he, initially, it, it did seem like that, but as it went on, I discovered, I realized that that was probably just the character that they were going for, and he does emote more at things that make sense to emote at. But yeah. um, it's very good so far. Yasuke... Super fucking cool. Um, the core, the fights and shit like that, very crazy, very yeah, good. The OG, uh, they're not an OG studio, but they're 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 a pretty great studio, man. They they did a lot of great stuff. Which studio? They, Mappa, the same people who who's doing Yasuke. Did, oh, okay. Got a high school is pretty. And, well, oh, they made Got a high school. That's crazy. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. They're doing Chainsaw Man. I don't know if you read manga at all. I've heard, I've been hearing about Chainsaw Man. I've, I've been interested in getting into it. Like a day. Uh, it's a really good then, anime so far. I'm four episodes in. I I may finish it tonight. Um, by the time you, by, the, by next week, you may be able to finish it. Because it's only, it's six episodes, 30 minutes per episode. So it'll only take like three hours to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, but. And we could spoiler cast it out. We could, yeah. Um, cause there's some crazy shit in there, okay. but it's, it's really good. The music done by Flying Lotus and Thundercat, the intro is, is crazy. The intro is great. When you, the music is probably my favorite part of it. The music mm. is easily probably my favorite part of it. Um, because I, you just don't hear like beats in, in anime that often. You don't hear like, <laughs> like crazy Flying Lotus beats in anime. Yeah. Only, it's really good. I can really think of that has beats in quotation is uh uh Jesus what the fuck is it New Job Base which was oh uh Samurai Champloo yeah 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 it kind of has that feel um it kind of has a, a somewhat with the beats it kind of makes it have that kind of feel and I really enjoy it um okay. it feels. I hope there's a second season. Um, I, I'm thinking there will be after how successful this is going to be. But okay. um, I would have asked how you felt about the uh, the music as someone who would uh, who who will eventually do beats for an anime or a game or a show. Um, but since you haven't experienced it, I guess I couldn't ask that. No. Bitch ass. Uh, okay. Uh, but, anyway. <laughs> next week I will. Yeah. Next week you'll have some opinions. Yeah. Um. But you have seen Invincible. I haven't seen all of it, but I have seen Invincible. How many episodes? Uh, let me check Amazon Prime. I think I'm at my fourth episode, if I'm not. You f- it, it really it really turned me off because it's, it was a, a weekly thing. So. Oh, yeah, it was weekly. I watched it all after it all came out. Okay. Yeah, that's the only reason why. Uh, yeah, I didn't watch it weekly. I... I 
I decided okay. to watch it after I saw uh, everybody say that it was the best uh, superhero show ever made. Damn, it's eight episodes? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I ain't even got to episode four. Okay. Yeah, I, I jumped into it after seeing everybody call it um, either one of or the greatest superhero show ever made. Um, mm-hmm. I will tell you, it is. It, it really is. It <laughs> really is. It is, yeah. I I was uh, watching it yesterday. I finished it yesterday morning. Um, okay. I was crying. I was cr- I started crying. At, nice. In the, not even the the end of an episode, like the middle of an episode. I I, I was like wow. bawling. It's something. It, the writing is really really good. The scenes yeah. are really really good. It's based off of the comic book, which I haven't read, but the way they uh, translate that. I can see some scenes. You can see how they translate it to uh, to like film or uh, to like a visual media. Did you know it was the same guy that uh, wrote The Walking Dead that did this? Yeah, yeah. I. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy that that's crazy that he went from The Walking Dead to this because it's mm. it's very superhero. It's it feels um, it feels a lot like one of those uh, superhero shows we'd watch like. Uh, in the 2000s uh at times when it's not when it's not brutally gory and violent it kind of feels like uh it kind of feels like batman beyond or something yeah i could definitely get that vibe. yeah i really enjoy it um it's a i when <laughs> the end of the first episode is crazy so uh, how Bro, are you feeling on it so far though i love one through three uh episodes one through three Especially episode one. Yeah. Bro, what? That went insane. That ending was insane, bro. <laughs> it, it, it was... Man. I, you, when he, <laughs> it was I crazy. I did not expect that at all. When you get uh, to the end and realize the motivations of of uh, everyone that was there, the man... It's going to it's going to be crazy. Oh, so it definitely explains why he did what he did. He he does and he he cannot be stopped. Oh, <laughs> no! There, there's nothing that we can do to stop. Him. No. <laughs> that's, Yo, that's man. Great though. I'm I'm excited to finish it. I'm definitely got to finish man, it. Man, you got to finish that that show. Um I'm so I'm so busy, but I I got to make time for it. Yeah, it, it, it being so busy and having to fit uh forty eight minute like episodes into your week is gonna be hard, yeah. but it's gonna be so worth it. That um, second episode was pretty good too. The writing is incredible. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, obviously, but um, the way I really like the way the characters are done, and they feel like they feel very organic in the way they're written and the way they the way they act why they do the things they do so, like it feels i really like that for a superhero a superhero property there's so many out right now there's so many superhero things right out right now that one that does the characters right one that does um it's crazy that it's this violent and it can also be very like emotional and impactful as well yeah yeah mm-hmm. which i feel like I was thinking about that too. Like it, something about how gory it is brings a reality to it that makes the emotional moments feel very not rare, well rare, but also very like real. They have a real purpose, yeah. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the the contrast of the crazy the crazy violence, the crazy gore with the uh, very human moments, the very human feelings, and how the characters express themselves is in- insane. It's, mm-hmm. like, incredible. Um, I'm really excited for the season two and three they announced, but... Oh, let's go! I love when seasons one. Get, a, get announced. Baby. Yeah. That's season incredible. one is fucking crazy. So, if they can keep nailing this, how they've nailed season one, this will be fucking insane yeah um i haven't read the uh no go ahead go ahead before i switch okay i haven't read the comics or um so i'm and i'm not going to because i don't want to be spoiled on anything that's going to happen in season two and three reading manga bro it's not the same i like experiencing everything yeah when you visual media yeah when you experience like when you 
come to a property like and you can watch the show first mm-hmm. sometimes the the like trying to read it just doesn't hit the same it just doesn't yeah. um if you start reading it first then it does but it, when you go backwards it just doesn't feel the same really i read uh like a hundred issues of black clover mm, so yeah. i knew like the first hundred episodes so it, it it was like made it unfun to watch the episode. So I was like, hey, I don't really like doing this, but I've yeah, it also it. makes watching the show like less enjoyable. Yeah, I've done it for two other things. Uh, uh, these kids are loud as hell. Um, 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 Black Clover. Oh, uh, a manga called Blue Period about is like uh, this artist kid. Yeah. It's really good. We don't have to talk about it on the podcast. But, uh, and then. Is it 18 uh, plus? Chainsaw Man. Huh? Is it 18 plus? Is that why you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Because, I mean, I could bring it up, but it wasn't on a liner note. Uh, okay. It, it's really good. It's about this kid who, who, like, people think he's just smart, but he really just works hard. And, uh, he figure out he figures out at, uh, like a couple months before he graduates from high school. Or junior year, rather, he wants to become an artist, and mm. uh, okay. he really just dives into becoming like a a, a drawer, painter, multifaceted artist. Okay, it's really good. It's like, I would actually, I think you would really like it. Actually, I, I like art, so I it, it sounds like it would be it pretty got good. Announced recently that they're doing an anime uh, anime adaptation. Ooh, so I'm ex- I'm excited for that. But okay, yeah, sweet. I would suggest you read that, and then Chainsaw Man, which we already talked about. But have you watched The Boys? Yeah. And have you watched? Uh, oh my God, the 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 television version of the Watch Watchmen. I haven't. Oh my God, I haven't. The one that's on HBO, right? I yes. haven't seen that. No. You have to watch God, it. God damn, it's I should so see good. that. I it's need so to. It's so good. We should talk about that. I mean, like, it's an old topic. Maybe you know. I don't know if you really want to talk about it. But I will. I will it. watch it because I. I it's definitely so, need to. So fucking good. It is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Have I've heard nothing but the same, but that from everyone who's ever watched it. So no, I, I need so to. Good. It's so crazy. The first episode is some shit. First episode, <laughs> shit. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy that. We I'm glad you able... I'm glad you brought up the boys because um it's invincible is definitely comparable to the boys in the fact that uh it's very much uh superheroes in a real world sometimes they can not be with the power that they have they can yeah. turn on us at any point and uh it'll be hard to stop them. Yeah. Um I feel like Invincible did a better job of that than the boys in that I care about the characters in Invincible, but I don't really, I can't really understand some characters in the boys, but I don't really, I feel like I don't really care about any of them because they're all kind of written to be somewhat unlikable, even yeah. though, even though the, some of the characters are trying to be like sincere and shit like that, they're written to be like the superheroes, especially are written to have like negative elements to them, but exactly. In Invincible, I feel like they feel very human. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy that we're in a state where we can we can have mature shows like these. Yeah. Because I don't think... I think the first mature like action movie was Watchmen, right? I... Th- the first mature action movie? Yeah, like the first one that would show like gore for a, a, a comic book character. Well, no, we it had would be a, it would be nah, we had hard those, to say because uh, there's a lot terrible, of we had those terrible, terrible, uh, those terrible uh, Punisher movies. Oh yeah, out. I forgot the fucking those, Punisher movies. Yeah, those movies are pretty bad. I have you ever seen? Uh, did you watch the Netflix shows? The Punisher. Ne- I did not. I did not. Are they good? I did not. <laughs> Daredevil is incredible. Iron Fist season one is trash. Iron Fist season two is okay. Uh, what's the guy that can't get shot? He's black. Luke Cage. Luke Cage was garbage. Uh, Jessica Jones was pretty good. Literally, Punisher is two, but number one, the Daredevil show is top fucking tier. That's top okay. Tier. You okay. I've seen a couple of scenes from it, and and I 
I saw the uh, a couple of the fight scenes actually specifically mm -hmm. because those are highly talked about to be amazing fight scenes. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten into the story though, which I should. I have sometimes I just skip over things and I never get around to checking them out, even though you, mm -hmm. even though you mentally know you want to, and you just never get around to it. It's because there's so much shit getting dropped all the time, and yeah, you're always busy. Yeah, and <laughs> shit just. Oh, yeah, I really want to watch that, but I got to go to work. Yeah, and exactly. you come home tired, and then you forget about whatever you re really wanted to do that day. Yeah, so. basically, but, yeah. It's been that for me for, for years, so I miss a bunch yeah. of shit sometimes. Yep. <laughs> I miss everything but games, honestly. But, yeah, and um, I miss games because I don't have a <laughs> system that, is out, that gets games anymore for some reason. <laughs> But uh, is that all your thoughts on Invincible? Uh, How are you feeling about it uh, three episodes in? It's awesome. Uh, I really enjoy that, like you said, I'm emotionally in invested in the characters. Yeah. I'm specifically, mo what's the main character's name? It's been so... It's Mark? Been a yeah. I'm specifically interested in his story and his father's story more than most people. Uh... Just on the fact because he feels like an actual teenager who literally, yeah. spoiler alert, I mean, it came out a couple weeks ago, shut the fuck up, uh, that he literally just got his powers and he's becoming a more... You, you said it was a spoiler that he got his powers? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess, right? Because he doesn't have his, the first 15 minutes of the show, he doesn't have his powers, or 10. Uh, yeah, but it's called Invincible. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Uh, see, you, you interrupted me. Now I don't have a train of thought. You were you uh, were um, talking about how he's uh, Mark is act an actual like teenager. He feels yeah, very he, real. Like, he feels real, and he has trouble. Uh, like he's just learning how to uh, balance his life with such a new experience that he's doing. Like, like. Is that the second or third episode where he goes on a date with the girl from the first episode, the black girl? Yeah, and, uh, I think that's like the third episode, but yeah. Yeah, it's and like, he goes on a date, but he, he asks the girl over, but then he has to save a family yeah. at uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. He has to make it back. Like, everything feels like there's an actual tangible region for doing something. In yeah, the show. It, does, and, it does like that thing... It does, uh, like, in a lot of superhero media, uh, when, like, a teenager gets their, like, powers, they do they do that thing where they try to balance their life in, like, superhero time and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is done in a very good way because it's, it made me, like, it made me, like, to the girl, I was like, yo, he's so goddamn busy. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's yeah. literally saving lives all the time. And, yeah. like, it, it, just, it does make it, make him feel very real and believable and like mm -hmm. he's an actual person because i would like you you don't have sometimes you just don't have time for shit really yeah. um but there are a lot of very good conversations to be had when you finish that show man you're gonna have that game that movie is gonna be not a game or a movie that show is gonna be crazy <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I should definitely have it done. I have two papers due Monday next week. Okay, you should uh, definitely focus on those. You you don't yeah. need to you don't need to uh, like uh, catch up on fail, shit for the show. I, I don't need to fail fail college, college for this my podcast. Last two classes for the podcast. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> uh, but for sure, I'll finish it within the next two weeks for sure. We can talk about it. It'll be man. Okay, yeah, you should give me an update by next week too okay. like you should give me an update on how far you've watched because when you have a free day do you have a free day in the next week more than likely when you have a free day um if you have like a good few hours of time try to watch as much of it as you can because okay. it at a point I was like I was glued to it like I could <laughs> like I, I I was glued to it but then the episodes weren't out, so I was oh like, well, yeah. Right, I'm gonna just stop watching it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Now it's all out now, so you can just get okay. get it all over with. But mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's an amazing show. I can't wait to talk about it with you. But 
we are at the end of the episode, and at the end of the episode, we tell everybody where they can find us. Where can they find you? Uh, are we, we're going to be flipped. So right here is my socials. Oh, uh, yeah. You can find me at <laughs> Instagram, civilian, S-I-V period, L-I-L-I-A-N. Still confusing. Twitter, Ryan with a gap. Uh, don't use it often. And then Bandcamp, uh, same thing, civilian, but with no period. And uh, yeah, if you follow me, I haven't been posting much because I've been busy with school, but I'm graduating. And I got a lot of ideas, so I'm going to put those into play. Where can they find you at? Nigel? I'm excited for your ideas, Shill. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> they can, you can find me on uh, Twitter at UncoloredP and on Instagram as Uncolored pay, uh, Uncolored Page. Um, you can also catch me weekly streaming on the For All Nerds Twitch channels, maybe even um, the For All Nerds YouTube. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, we are out of here. You have hydrated pee. I would hope so. <laughs> your uncolored pee. You're right. Yeah, I should I should start marketing wow. myself with that. That's. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you everyone for tuning in to the. Uh, Bad Input Podcast for episode... This is three, right? Yeah. Episode two. Episode two. This is two? Yeah. Episode two. Yeah, there was an episode uh, zero. I, yeah, episode I, zero. The right. further we get in the, into this, I don't know why I did that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> difficult. Uh, remember that, but we, we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we want you to have an incredible week. We'll see you next time, all right? See ya.